everyone, welcome back to episode four on how to create a online simple game. Uh, last episode we did play animations and collisions and today we're going to be talking about how we can synchronize these enemies so that everybody has the same enemy on their screen. Uh, this is going to be actually quite similar to how we did player movement. Uh, we're basically going to be sending the position of the slime every single tick or every single second to uh, all of the other players connected. Um, and we're going to be doing this uh, based on the host. So whatever the host sees, the, all the client should see as well. Uh, and the host dictates where the slime are. Let's first of all create a host variable, right? Because we don't actually know who the host is in this instance. Um, so if we go back to our multiplayer code, if we call this create match function, that means we have to be the host. Um, so we can easily just create, uh, can create a variable here called host. Um, I'm going to assign it a default value of false because uh, you, you wouldn't be, there's only one host, right? Um, and when you create a match, you are going to be made host, right? We're going to be host equals true. Great. So now that we know who is host, we want to now update the slimes on the host's machine and send off the slime data, position data to everybody else connected. Um, and the way we can do that is if we go to our rooms and we go to in-game, uh, if we go to room events over here, every room actually has an on-step function as well. So let's take a look at this. Uh, and this already has some code to determine if uh, you've won or not uh, through the amount of coins. But here we basically want to say get all of the slimes and send their position off to everybody connected. So first of all, we actually want to see if you know, the current player is the host. So if we just do if host, um, this will own, this code will only execute if you are the host of the game. So we wanna be doing something similar to what we do with the player, sending data. So we can do in a camera, dot uh, socket, dot send match state. And we have the match ID already uh, from uh, our code over here, match ID. Uh, then we want to give it the opcode. If you remember, it, we need the match ID, the opcode, and the data we're sending. So match ID we've done. Opcode is going to be something new this time. We're going to introduce two <laughs> instead of one, because if we go back to our projects, if we scroll down to where we are listening for the opcodes, we only have a case of one, right? And this case uh, is if we're sending case of one, we means we're moving the player. So now we're going to send the case of two which means we're going to be updating the slime position. Uh, so we can, you know, for, for, for clarity's sake, we can do case two here. We can just do break. Um, so we have, so, so we know for the future uh, we're going to be working here. So if we go back to our room, we give it the opcode of two, and now we need to give it the data. Now let's create the data. Now here, we don't want to actually send the slime types uh, or the, the current slime types uh, because it is a lot of data that we're not going to be using, right? The, the, the slime type contains a bunch of other functions and variables which we don't really need. We only need the x and y positions of the slime. So the way we can extract the x and y of all the slime is by first of all looping through all of the current slime in the game and then pushing it to our own data structure or data variable um, only with the x and y values. So let's do exactly that. So if we go to the documentation of actually how we can access the slimes on our game, uh, if we scroll down to uh, CT types and scroll down over here, um, there you go. Here we have a function called uh, CT types.list type name. And this returns an array with all the existing copies of the specific type, which is exactly what we want. We want all of the copies of our slime here. Uh, so we can just copy this, we can paste it here. And instead of bonus, it's gonna be called slime. And instead of bonus here, it's gonna be slime with a big S. And the reason why this is slime here is because we have called our slime slime <laughs> so let's go back to our room 
and you know, we're not going to be killing our slime here. So we want to actually be just extracting the x and y value of where that current slime is in the game. Um, so we can assign data to be a list. And we are going to be basically saying uh, data.push. So we're going to be making a new entry in data. And we're going to be pushing a dictionary of the x and y value of the slime. And it's simple as doing x equals x uh, slime.x and also y is equal to slime.y. So now we just have all of the slime's positions um, and none of the other, other variables and functions that come with uh, a copy. Great, so now that we've pushed everything to this data variable, we can just send that data uh, in our match state. And um, we should be receiving that on our uh, on match listener. So now in our listener, uh, we can basically do, and this is, this is actually gonna be only executed with connected clients, so people who are not hosts, um, as the host is just gonna be sending the data to every single client. Um, we're basically just gonna loop through this data structure and update the, the, the client, the current um, game, right? <laughs> With the host's slime data. Um, it can get a little bit confusing talking about host and client, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's do a uh, for each function, because this is a list, we can nicely do result.data and result.data is coming from here. Uh, we, we're, we're using it here. Uh, so result.data dot for each. And we know this is a slime and we'll make a arrow function. If, there you go. And we basically wanna be updating now the slime's position. So right now in our game, we have three slimes. We have one here at the top, one here at the bottom and one here on the middle of the map. How will the game know which one to update, <laughs> right? How will it know? We don't have any, we don't have any identifier to identify this specific slime or this specific slime here. Um, and to be honest, in our case, we don't really need an identifier or an ID because we're assuming that the host has three slimes and the client should have three slimes as well. It doesn't really matter which slime it updates. It just matters to update all of them at the same time. With this approach, we're making our lives a little bit more simple because we don't need to search and update this specific slime or this specific slime. We basically just want to say, you know, update this slime, update this slime, update this slime, update all of the slimes uh, with the position data that we're getting. And because it's a guarantee of three slimes, um, those three slimes are just gonna be updated um, on the map without needing to know uh, their ID. And I'll show you what I mean now with the code. So let's just update the first slime, for instance, right? So if we do ct dot, uh, types dot list, uh, dot list, and then we get the slime. Um, so now we have all of the slimes. So this is gonna be array with three slimes in it. And if we, you know, just access the first slime in this list, so we can do that with just zero. We can do dot x equals slime dot x. And this slime dot x comes from here where we said uh, slime x equals slime dot x and y equals slime dot y. So if we go back to our project and we can copy this line um, and replace the x with a y. So now we're just updating one of the slimes in this list, but we want all of the slimes. And the way we can get all of the slimes is by just simply introducing a counter, which will go through all of the slimes and uh, update all of them. And what, am I, what I mean by that is if we just do a slime counter and we assign zero to it. Um, and for every loop, we're gonna plus equals one, which basically means just gonna add one to the counter. Uh, we can replace this zero here with this slime counter. And what that means is it's gonna be zero at the beginning 
we're going to update the, the first slime in our game. Then it's going to turn into one. And then we're going to update this, the second slime in our game. And it's going to turn into two, which will update the third slime in our game. And it'll, and it'll be updating with the host's current slime position. So let's save this. Uh, let's launch and let's see if it works. There you go. Uh, we can see now the slime are perfectly synchronized <laughs> with our <laughs> client and host. Now you may have seen a bug, which is a bit weird. The slime kind of looked the other way, but I go in this way. Um, like, like this is what's, what's happening here. This is weird. <laughs> like this, something weird is happening here. Um, that's, that's a bug for the future. We'll, we can fix that once we're polishing, polishing things up. But uh, it's synchronizing, right? Everything works. Now this slime here is gonna be exactly shared. Uh, it's gonna be exactly the same position as the host and the client. So nothing weird is gonna be happening when, for instance, a player dies because the slime are uh, unsynchronized. Now they're completely synchronized and we're all good. Um, okay, cool. But what happens when I get killed by one of these slime? We get a bunch of errors in the console, first of all, and we are just standing still here on the host side, which isn't exactly what we want. So let's talk about how we can introduce respawning when a player gets killed, either by a slime or either by the spikes over here. Okay, let's first of all see how death works, right? How does this collision work? Uh, so if we go to our types, and if we go to our player on step, if you scroll down, we get to see, check if we, we collide with spikes. Um, and this code actually here checks if we collide with a collision group called enemy. Uh, and now these collision groups here, you can have uh, any kind of collision group you create. This one has player. If we check the spikes collision group, we have uh, a signed collision group enemy to it. And if we, if we look at the slime, we also have assigned the collision group called enemy. So basically the code here says every single time you collide with an enemy, do this code. Uh, and in this case, it's spawning a, the body like falling uh, and it's moving to the death screen, uh, which we saw just earlier on the right hand screen. So a quick and easy way to get respawning working is by just simply, instead of showing them a death screen, just spawning them back at the start where they started. Um, and I wonder if you can figure it out. It's gonna be really easy. Have you guessed? <laughs> we can just come here and we can just do this.x and we can give it the new coordinates where they wanna uh, spawn. So if we actually go back to room uh, if you hover your mouse above one of the points, you actually get to see here this changing and it's the X and Y value. So X is 70 and Y is 350. Um, great, so 70 and 315. If we go to types, X is 70, this dot Y equals 3.15. 3.15, not 3.15. Cool. So now every single time uh, our player collides with an enemy, they are just gonna be whoosh, teleported back to these coordinates of 70 and 315. Great, but now this is only for the player, right? This is gonna be only for the host. So how do we make sure other players get respawned? And it is simple as just copying, going to other player, going to on step, and adding a collision check here for this other player. So now we're saying if this other player collides with an enemy, respawn them back. So let's save it, let's launch, and let's see if it works. Okay, so here we are in our game. Let's move these players here. And if I go ahead and kill myself, there you go, I get to respawn here and the player and the host can also see me uh, respawning. And this works as well for, uh, I'm going crazy. And this also works for the host. So if I kill, there you go, I get to respawn. That's it. 
Awesome, so that was episode four on uh, slime synchronization or enemy synchronization and the player respawning. In the next episode, we are gonna be talking about how we can implement uh, coins and kind of a little bit more about gameplay and how uh, this platformer is actually gonna work. Um, what I mean by that is like, I think it'll be quite interesting to see if we can make a uh, platformer where you have to collect all the coins as fast as you can and you're, and you're like battling against each other. Um, and whoever gets the most coins uh, out of 33 wins the game. Something along the lines of that. Uh, so yeah, next episode is gonna be all about how we can be updating the coins for everyone uh, and how that kind of all works. Awesome, so thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next episode.